So that's kind of where we left off. Now, let's look at the coefficient table a little bit and see what it tells us. Now, again, here's our regression coefficients. And it, you can take this, this is, this is valuable stuff. This is our regression equation. It's just kind of not written as an equation. But you just take the constant, that's your intercept. Constant's just the name for the intercept. Actually, at the very end of class, for a brief moment, you'll see why it's called the constant. Um, so it's 1.040 plus 0 0.066, there's our regression coefficient times school quality, plus 0 0.057 times study hours. That's the regression equation. We plug in however many, we plug in whatever the school quality rating is for a student, multiply by 0 0.066. We plug in however many hours they studied, multiply that by 0 0.057, add 1.04, and that gives us their predicted GPA, their predicted grades. Now, a couple things. Notice, again, just like with simple regression, everyone, if, if two people have the same values for school quality and study hours, their predicted score is going to be exactly the same. Regardless of what other differences they may have, your predicted scores are only based on those two variables. Um, also kind of notice this general idea of how do we come up with predicted scores? We're just taking a bunch of regression coefficients, a bunch of Bs or betas, and multiplying those by a corresponding bunch of Xs. We're going to see this again later on, but kind of written in a different way. But the same idea of you take your predictors, and multiply them by whatever those regression coefficients, those weights, you know, most people talk about them as regression weights as well. Whatever those are, you multiply those together, add the constant, and you get your predicted score. The, um, here's the t-test for each of those coefficients, each of those effects. So that it's a t-test for is this coefficient equal to zero? Which is the test for is, it, is there an effect? Because if it says, oh, that effect, that regression coefficient is not significantly different from zero, that tells you that variable has no effect. It might as well be zero, which is another way of saying no effect. So these coefficients are testing, I'm sorry, these t-tests are testing each of these values for the regression coefficients and in essence, well, not in essence, and what that's doing is testing the effect of each of the variables. Is school quality significant? Is, is study hours significant? Um, again, we have the annoyance that it doesn't give us the degrees of freedom, but that's all right. We know where to get them. Here's the p-values for each of those t-tests, the p-values for each of those effects. Also remember again, never say P is equal to 0 0.000. It's less than 0 0.001. If it's 0 0.001, you do write P equals 0 0.001. So this is P equals 0 0.001. And this is P is less than 0 0.001. Um, yeah? Can I just clarify that one something? So the T score that you're using to determine whether it's significant. Yeah. Can you just, so it's not literally just comparing the 0 0.066 to the 3.821, it's comparing 0 0.066 times school quality to see if it's significant? The t-test, this t-test is, is comparing 0 0.066 to zero. So it's not, it's not comparing, the, it's, it's the question is, this is the effect, this is that slope. As school quality goes up, how much do grades go up? As studying goes up, how much does grades go up? And it tells us there's a little slope, 0 0.057. That's the slope. As we study more, our grades are going up. The question is, well, if you have a microscope, any slope is going to be 
not zero. It's going to be a little bit bigger or a little bit less than zero. So the question is, is that slope, is 0 0.066 extreme enough? Is it, is it a big enough, is it extreme enough? Is it far enough out from zero that we're confident it's not equal to zero? So it's comparing 0 0.066 to zero. That's what the t-test is doing. And think of the, the one sample t-test slides, and now where we talked about that, where it was t, it's, it's t equals your x bar minus, we had, you know, minus some, some value, and there was one slide where I said we can, you can make that zero, which is what, all of these are one sample t-tests. Okay, so the t is not in regards to the predicted score, it's in regards to the variable that you're measuring. Like it's, yes, the, each of these T's is, has nothing to do with the predicted okay. score. It's talking about these individual effects. Because okay. you, you might have a very good regression equation that can predict scores, but individual variables are completely useless. They're making no contribution at all. And that's what the T is going to tell us. Does this help us predict? Is that a significant effect? Is, is this number equal to zero? Now, that's why the constant, this one is often people don't care about. Because often the constant is, is it's, 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 this is asking is if, if school quality is zero and if study hours is zero, so think of the regression equation, if school quality is zero, you're at a school that is whatever, really horrible school, and you never ever study, your predicted GPA is going to be 1.04 plus 0 0.066 times 0 plus 0.057 times 0. Your predicted GPA is 1.04. So the constant, the intercept is the predicted outcome when all of the independent variables are equal to 0. Usually, no one cares. You know, that's a very specific question. Often people don't really care. Well, what's the, do I really care if, a one, if the predicted GPA, if you're in a horrible school and never, never study, is different from zero? Yeah, you, but often we're not interested in that. Often it doesn't even make sense. If we're predicting SAT scores, I'm sorry, if, if, if one of these, instead of school quality, let's say we're predicting GPA a college GPA, and this is your SAT score. SAT scores can never be zero, in which case the, your predicted GPA with a zero on your SAT means absolutely nothing. So generally, we don't really focus too much on that. Well, later on in the semester, we'll talk about situations and ways that we can, but we generally don't. But again, that's the test for these are these regression coefficients different from zero. Okay? Now, kind of following up on that, this t test, you may ask yourself, well, what about the beta? That's my, this is my unstandardized regression coefficient. What about my standardized regression coefficient? How do I know if that's different from zero? Well, if you think about it, it's the exact same t test. Because it's, it's the same thing, it's just a, what's called a linear transformation. It's, it's just taking the same number and manipulating it to z-scores instead of the raw scores. So this t-test is also your test for our beta is equal to zero. So, and in fact, we'll see later on, we're not talking yet about partial correlations and part correlations. We'll get to that later. We'll probably talk about it more than Keith does particularly the part correlations. But these are other effects on this. And the tests for these effects are also the exact same t-test. This t-test tests your unstandardized regression coefficient. It's the test for your standardized regression coefficient. It's the same test for your partial coefficient and for your semi-partial, uh, part or also called a semi-partial co coefficient. It's one t-test that is testing everything. It's kind of like one-stop shopping. It's the Costco of statistical tests. Since you can literally buy everything you need from birth to death. Oh my God. <laughs> it's do, it does it all. 
Um, now, we're going to look at, uh, at look at this in several different ways. We're going to look at kind of what's the regression equation in a few different ways and kind of how it works.